Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Seasoned Iron. These videos will focus on any news pertaining to American made cast iron, along with carbon steel and sales from the manufacturers, as well as any new product launch or uh, kitchenware for that matter. So uh, for those of you that like cooking and like any kind of uh, kitchenware, I'll focus on that as well. But for now, let's get started with uh, some news. The first thing that I want to talk about is going to be Lodge Cast Iron. They have created a Facebook group and uh, to kick it off, they did a recipe of the month. It does look like it's something that I want to give a try. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it, you can find it on the Facebook group. You guys can join that Facebook group if you guys uh, haven't done so yet. You go and give it a look. So each month, they will be dropping a new recipe for everyone to make together. Uh, the Facebook group will be sharing tips, techniques, inspired pairings, and unexpected twists to help make this uh, meal your own. So I think this is a great way for Lodge to participate with the community and to give a lot of people some ideas of what they can cook in their cast iron cookware uh, and give inspiration for them to continue to use their uh, cast iron pieces. Uh, Smithy Ironware just had their second sale and uh, it, they did have it this Friday morning which to be honest I you know I, I didn't get a chance to look at it and uh, the sale did great to be honest their sale did really good to the point that they sold out within the hour um, I did go and take a look and see if I could find anything but sure enough everything had already sold out so they did a great job by uh, selling out all of their cookware, which was seconds. Now, if you guys don't know what a seconds is, it is technically a piece of cookware that has a small flaw or a small defect, but nothing to the point that will affect the uh, cookware. So it is just purely cosmetic. Also, I wanted to mention that Field Company has just celebrated their seven year anniversary now, I didn't get a chance to participate with one of their sales. They did have a sale from the 1st of March, I believe, to the 3rd of March. So it was technically about a three-day sale, and it was free shipping on all cast iron cookware within the lower 48 states. Um, but I am happy that Field Company is doing so great. And one thing that I do want to say about Field Company is that their cookware is phenomenal. I've had no issues with their cookware. I highly recommend it. And not only that, but uh, a lot of people have gotten to the point that they reference them to be the modern day Griswold. And for good reason, their cookware, as I said, is great, lightweight, um, the seasoning for the skillets will develop really beautifully. And uh, I love Field Company. One of the cast iron companies that I do like a lot, but I haven't had a chance to really review or even you know hold in my hands is actually uh, something pertaining to baking. Uh, this is called uh, Ferno Bread, and uh, they do make a oven for sourdough baking or anything for that matter that pertains to um, baking. And it looks very interesting. I've seen a lot of videos on Instagram, and it's something that I'm considering to possibly make a purchase for in the future. I'm not sure yet, but if you guys are interested, let me know if you guys would like me to do a review on this down the road uh, and leave that in the comments below. It is a little bit expensive. It does retail for 325 US dollars. So this is why I think I'm going to hold off for now. Otherwise, my wife is going to kill me. All right, guys, now we're going to switch up to carbon steel. Now, if you guys have been following my channel, I've been cooking with carbon steel. I want to say about a month and a half now, maybe two. And... Uh, I've been enjoying the time that I've been using carbon steel cookware. And with that, I did get a Debouillé. I also have a Matfer and some, some other companies that are carbon steel, some American and uh, some French made carbon steel along with a uh, Brazilian made uh, carbon steel. And um, there is a, one more carbon steel company that I have not checked out and they are from France. Technically, they are the big three, which would be Matfer, Debouillé, and the last that I haven't really taken a look at is Maviel. Now I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I am interested in doing a review for Maviel 
Uh, so look forward to that. I'm not going to do one right now, but down the road, I still have a lot of things uh, in the works with Debuye and also Matt Fur. I do want to do an update for you guys about the pants and how they've uh, held up. Okay, guys, and the first one that I want to talk about is the Debuye. This is an 8 inch pan, and as you can see, this is their Mineral B. It does have a coated handle, so this isn't oven safe, but I've used it mostly for eggs, uh, breakfast items, things of that nature. I've even done a steak on this, and it performed great. Uh, the thickness on this is very good, so it does hold up to a high heat. And, it, and as I said, it does brown meats really well and it cooks evenly. I haven't had any issues. I'm happy with the way this Debuye has performed. So highly recommended. Um, and for the price, not very expensive. This is something that is around, uh, I want to say 55 US dollars. So if you guys have the chance, do check out Debuye. So far, this Mineral B 8 inch has done really well. And as you can see, the seasoning is starting to build up. Uh, when I first initially bought it and did the review of this, it was a silver color. Now, as you can see, it's getting somewhat darker and more of a chocolatey color. Here's a close-up for you guys so you guys can see. And honestly, at this point, I'm not worried about the evenness. I am worried about just getting it to the point where it is non-stick and it's cooking really well. All right, guys, moving on to the mat fur. This one is their 11 and 3 quarter inch pan. Uh, as you can see, this one has developed a good patina. It has darkened up a little bit more. Now this model does actually have a uncoated handle and it is oven safe up to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm sure it could go up a little bit higher, but um, at that point you're gonna be burning your seasoning off, so I don't recommend that. This pan has performed outstanding, no issues whatsoever, and I do like it a lot. And I can see why this has been uh, America's test kitchen top pick. Uh, and this thing, as I said, is phenomenal. No issues, no warping. And I do have a flat top uh, stove and I've had no issues with that. Now I will say that the patina has developed a lot better when I took it to the uh, outdoor propane stove and it did a great job there. There was no warping, no issues. Uh, there is a little bit of a scratch here for me moving it around, but not a big deal. As I said, it just has performed so well. I'm extremely happy. And uh, I want to say that Matt Fur has become one of my favorites. So if you guys have a chance, do check out Matt Fur. I do recommend them a lot. All right, the next one that I want to talk about is actually the Castaway Carbon Steel Skillet. This is the 10 inch. Now, before I get into talking about my skillet, I do want to say that uh, they do have a lot of products in production right now. They have bigger pans, they have dual handle pans, and even some grill uh, pans for outdoor cooking. So a lot of stuff in the works, and I'm excited to see what they're gonna be uh, producing. We also have updated models, which I did talk about the handle and how they needed to do a little bit of uh, updating on the handle um, because it does have some sort of flexibility to it. It is somewhat easy to bend. Um, also, the edges are super rough. And uh, I think the new one, what I've seen on Instagram, they've given it somewhat of a bevel to make it more comfortable. Also, I think they've beveled the edges all throughout the pan. So they're doing some good revisions on their current production skillets. And uh, it looks like they're gonna be producing more. Uh, they do have some dual handle pans and bigger skillets. So I'm happy and I do wanna uh, get some more cookware from them because they are fairly priced. Um, so with that, Castaway has done a great job with their cookware. Mine has actually performed really well. I've done several short videos and uh, showcasing how well the uh, seasoning is on this. Now, yes, it is not jet black. And as you can see, it is splotchy as can be. But uh, the way it performs, the way it cooks, it does the job and it does it great. So I'm happy with Castaway. They're doing a great job with their skillets as well and actually listening to their customers and to the reviewers, so I'm happy with that as well. And the last piece of cookware that I wanna showcase for you guys is the Santa Barbara Forge. I did do the review on this, or unboxing, not necessarily a review, but I've shown this in action in some of my shorts. If you guys haven't seen them, do check them out. But this pan is uh, actually fairly thick, 
and overall the construction of this pan is beautiful the handle itself also very beautiful and just the way it cooks and performs is phenomenal um, it does since it does have a thicker metal it does retain heat a little bit better and there is no warping in this um, there might be a slight uh, inward bow but uh, it's still very flat whenever I use it on my stovetop. No issues there. Uh, and I do know that a lot of people are worried about induction. Induction and carbon steel do not go well together for some reason. So if you do have induction, always be careful on how you heat your pan. So with that, these pans have performed really well. Santa Barbara Forge, a very, very beautiful skillet, a good piece of cookware. And if you guys have the ability to buy yourself one of these, highly recommended really is a show piece and something that you want to keep on your stovetop all right guys and that is the end of that portion we're going to continue going now with the main topic of the video which is going to be victoria cast iron you guys get comfortable because we're going to be talking about victoria cast iron cookware uh, and if you guys have been keeping up with the channel uh, there was a little bit of a you know mixed reviews with that in the sense that it's obviously a great piece the price is a little high in my opinion but there's reasons for it that i will explain to you in a minute uh, but the first thing that i do want to say is that the seasoning on this skillet has been an issue to me and when i mentioned this to their instagram account they did respond to me they were uh, sending me messages uh, so we got to the point that we actually had a phone call and uh, I did manage to talk to one of the team members from uh, the Victoria Cast Iron USA down in, I want to say Miami. So they might be based in Miami. Um, and I did have a phone call with uh, Bibi. Uh, so shout outs to Bibi. Um, thank you for reaching out and taking some time to talk to me about my experience with the, uh, with the product. Now, if you do see that the uh, cooking surface is a different color to the pan overall, reason being is that when I did the initial wash for this skillet, the seasoning just completely stripped away. Now, in the video that I did post uh, about this unboxing, um, I did mention that I was getting ready to pause the video while I was recording and move over to the sink to give it a good wash. And when I did so with a little bit of warm water and soap, the seasoning completely came off from the cooking surface. Now I've, I reviewed so many units now at this point that I can't even keep count, uh, but none of that has ever happened to any of the other skillets that I've reviewed. Even the smaller companies, I've never experienced that. So it was a little bit shocking. It was a little bit disappointing. And I'll be honest, um, I was, I was upset. And uh, the reason being is that I was ready to give it a go. I was so happy with the way it looked when I unboxed it. Uh, I was just eager to cook with it and I was ready to do the egg test. So obviously that did not happen because it went down to straight bare iron and I, I wasn't going to cook anything. I had to clean it and reseason it and I did so. So that took some time and obviously, you know, the uh, skillet didn't look the same now. As I said, I did reach out to Victoria on Instagram and they did respond to me and we had a phone call. They gave me a lot of information and from there she told me she was going to actually see uh, what was going on with the uh, skillets. And uh, one thing though that I do want to share with you guys is that if you guys saw my video, I did mention that there was a number on the skillet uh, on the underside of the handle here. And she did tell me that these are actually numbered. So the first batch is uh, actually numbered and there's about 200 of these units. So there's 200 of the 12 inch from what I understood and mine is 110 out of 200. So that is a very unique piece. And to me, it has more value in the sense that I was one of the first ones to receive the 12 inch polished skillet. Now, the other thing that she did tell me is that I, in my video, I mentioned that cast iron cookware uh, is not you know, technically indestructible. But she did mention that they have a material that they used in the process of making this skillet, which is uh, that Sephiris um, technology. And uh, she went into explaining it a little bit in the conversation that we had over the phone. Um, but obviously there's more details into it, which um, now that I 
you know, mentioned that she does want to either uh, send a uh, video about the uh, process of making the skillet or possibly for us to talk in a live video for you guys to see and join. But with that being said, she also told me that perhaps she might post something on my video as a comment. Uh, that way you guys have more information. But as I said, they contacted me, we had conversations, and then she emailed me. So BB emailed me, and I do have the email here with me, and I do want to read it for you guys because it's very interesting. She says, hi Luis, below is the tracking number for the 13 inch soft finish. So they will be sending me a 13 inch dual handle pan with the soft finish. Um, and uh, I'm going to review it for you guys. And she says, I'm curious to see what you think. This surface is actually machined, but then we sandblast it just enough to give it this texture. Um, I know people love polish, but I really love the performance of, the, of this finish. So the finish is obviously micro textured. They bead blast it or sandblast it, whatever it is that they do, but they give it texture after they machine it. So that is actually very interesting. Um, and she also says, we find that it's more forgiving when it comes to carrying and seasoning. Uh, so it's easier to maintain and builds up seasoning faster is what she's saying. Also, I was going to write a comment on your original video expanding a little bit about the skillet and what features we worked on. Um, I wanted to check with you first if you're okay with this since I know you said you may want to do a follow-up video so I wouldn't hijack the topic from you. Uh, is it okay if I comment on your video as Victoria Cast Iron? Of course. And I told her that too. I actually replied to her email I, and I told her, of course, I think the more information, the better. Lastly, I wanted to let you know that we did some testing on 10 random units and most of them are having a similar issue to yours. We messed up big time. So they're, you know, they're recognizing that, yes, there was some issues. Uh, we had a meeting with the engineering and it seems that something in the first layer of the seasoning wasn't done properly. Mainly, it looks like the first layer was a tad too thick. We were so bent on getting the color uniform and dark that the first batch of skillets had this issue. Uh, they counted about 75 to 90 units of each size of the polished skillets from the first batch. Uh, we plan on doing a whoopsie sale uh, where we offer people a deep discount since they will need to wash and reseason. I still need to figure out how we can do that since, uh, you know, they are barely processing this. So the fact that they send me this email, the fact that they talk to me and the fact that they even went to go see if that was going to happen with uh, the other cookware that they have in, on hand uh, speaks volumes of, of who they are. They're willing to address the problem. They're willing to accept what had happened. And as I said, I've gained a, you know, higher respect for them. They are doing their business right. And I want to say that is the reason why they've lasted this long since 1939 and why people have become uh, enamored with their cookware. Their cookware is great. Not only that, but now their customer service is great. Um, they are like the South American Lodge. And Lodge has also built up a great reputation here in North America and everywhere else. Uh, and I want to say Victoria Cast Iron is following in those footsteps and creating their own path in the sense that they're making um, highly polished skillets and they're making cookware. They're taking the risks. They want to innovate and they're doing a great job. Now they're willing to, to do the follow-up with these uh, issues that have arised with their first batch. And she did mention to me actually that the first batch was somewhat of a pre-release. So technically they hadn't fully launched these yet. So... Uh, for those of you that did buy one beforehand, uh, make sure that you talk to Victoria Cast Iron Cookware. And she did mention that actually they're going to be going through all the purchase orders and contacting those who bought uh, the skillets and all their cookware in the pre-launch and letting them know of the issues that could arise. And if so, they will do something to reimburse them. So with that, as I said, it speaks volumes of who they are and what they represent. And for me, that is very, very respectful. I do love that. And they have gained a follower and a loyal customer. Uh, I will always back Victoria Cast Iron Cookware for that. Uh, and for me, that is a huge gesture. And when I had the conversation with BB over the phone, 
uh, she was telling me how they are cast iron aficionados as well. They are lovers of cast iron cookware. They, she talked about Butterpat, she talked about Stargazer uh, and all these other companies. And obviously they wanted to innovate from them as well. So um, to me, they, they are actually users. They are people who enjoy the cookware. They're people who love cast iron cookware and want to put out a great product. They're not just a company who's looking to make another dollar here and there. Uh, and that, as I said, highly respectable. And I love that. So to me, they're doing a great job. Obviously, to me, they, they've, you know, they're, they're here now. They're all the way to the top. Uh, and I consider them to be on par with the great companies here made in the USA uh, since they're willing to do so much for their customers. So with that being said, I am extremely happy. I highly recommend Victoria Cast Iron Cookware. And I do recommend that you check out their website. They have a lot of cookware that is well-priced. Uh, specifically on Amazon, you can find skillets from $10, $12, uh, $30. Um, and you know we're talking about 12-inch skillets uh, and all kinds of cookware for that matter. So do check them out. And on that note, uh, I am actually very happy about all this. And I did write her back an email. But we'll have more information for you guys. I'll do a proper update on the skillet and uh, possibly do a live video with her or perhaps a recording and upload it to the channel. So look forward to that as well. She will be talking about more uh, information with the skillet, the innovations that they've done with the skillet and uh, the cookware itself. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you guys think of Victoria Cast Iron after all this. And uh, with that, I appreciate your time. Thank you guys for watching.